to talk about is something which I don't know, which is the art of suffering. Uh, I can only share my experiences, but I am not an artist in designing subsidy. Uh, subsidy is something which, uh, before we start talking, I would like to give a warning. Subsidies are addictive. It can lead to obesity. Uh, this obesity one comes from uh, the subsidy which is given as food vouchers to a large part of American uh, population. And there is a very clear correlation between those food vouchers and increase in obesity of people who use those food vouchers. And it's true across borders, across technologies, uh, across uh, systems that it will create slot, it will create inertia, and it will eventually would not let things happen as they should happen. So this is uh, something which I would uh, like to bring as a warning before I start. What we are actually trying to achieve uh, is an uh, ideal soil moisture balance. Uh, how do we achieve is a different story. There is another element to it which we will come later but uh, using any pumping device we want to achieve an ideal soil moisture balance to get better profit. In this process, we need to save water, we need to save energy. This energy we can generate to any renewable means. When we deliver in a social system, it should be equitable. It should bring freedom to people who use it. So there should be an element of independence. Uh, if we talk about any renewable based pumping system that have deliberately removed solar out of it. Uh, we need to have two wings for it to fly. Water efficiency and energy efficiency. Now in terms of if we if we design policy or if we design any any framework, in India there are three major programs which are these three different components of that aircraft. To, to lift up. There is a huge water efficiency program. Uh, there is a huge energy efficiency program in pump which is happening in the country through, through BE. And there is a huge renewable energy boost which is, which is coming. And if these three things are not combining, then we are having each of the program wobbling rather than taking off. We all know why it is good to do health economy, energy security, environment, and you can add on more attributes to it. I'll uh, go back to some experience. Uh, we in Orwell uh, started doing solar pumps way back in 1984. That was the first solar pumping program. Uh, when we picked up the solar pumps from the yards, uh, they worked for three months. After that, we use panels for generating power, and they still produce power. Uh, it's beyond uh, 25 years. 93, uh, there was 91, 92. There was a second launch of the solar pumping program. We uh, started doing that. In that, uh, again, there were no data at that time. We did the first program. Did about 150 pumps in that lot and continue doing that uh, up to the number of about 2000 till 2005, 2006 and after that we stopped. Uh, two reasons. One is the famous longevity of solar panels for the question mark. 
we proved in the first 84 program the longevity of solar panels does exist. But in the 93-94 program and when it went much further, we had within the first 10 years about 40 percent failures had to go back to the warranties and these were number one, number two, number three companies of the world. I won't use the names of those companies over here. Uh, one critical reason for that was the, and, and it was varying in geographies. I'm, I'm not getting into the Punjab study, I'm just telling a little story about what was coming before as the longevity issues. One test which was not being done uh, in those era, eras was a salt spray test. Uh, and uh, subsequently now the panel uh, have gone through a modification and they go through a salt spray test. We are in a climate where there is salt in the air and this deteriorated or uh, oxidized even the hermetically sealed solar panels. Of course we got back the warranties but today in a, this hyper growth solar industry, how many companies are going to survive those 25 years is something to be seen. And all these three, one, two, three companies have folded up their operations. Some of them failed. They have now stopped making solar panels. Uh, still, I would say that it's not end of solar photovoltaics. Uh, it doesn't. When we started in our silicon revolution in our 8088 chips and till today in the PCs we have gone through an evolution. They are going through an evolution and it is now there to go to the next levels and uh, rethink and relearn from what has gone wrong. On the subsidy level, we worked in Punjab from 99 to 2005. We installed about 600 pounds in Punjab and about 150 pounds in Haryana. Uh, these pumps were 90 to 95 percent subsidized. For Punjabi farmers, it was peanuts to say. About 30,000 rupees for a pump which was costing in those years about 4 lakh rupees. In first year, they had recovered out of the saving of diesel their investment which was gone in. And subsequently we started to see that the pumps started disappearing from the field. Either they were stolen or reported stolen. And uh, by the third or fourth year, the, the system which was surviving uh, when they went through a problem of either a pump submergence or somebody has broken the solar panels, the repair cost was 30 to 40,000 rupees or a replacement cost was 30 to 40,000 rupees. At that moment, the farmer abandoned it. Uh, so, I am not paying high price, why should I repair it? So, uh, on by the time we reached 2005, and when our service engineer was spending more time in the police stations than repairing the solar pumps, one police officer who had a pump and who had a pump stolen from his field went through the entire exercise of finding who the people are behind and he came to our office, he said, if you want peaceful life, close your office. Uh, because the kind of people who are behind it, there is a huge opportunity of taking these solar panels from here and, and taking to Bihar to sell it in open market and you would be on disadvantage fighting with them. So we learned and listened to the counsel of this police officer and closed our office. We did a program in touch, much smaller, 15 pumps, uh, just to test try a model, a very different model of distribution. This was also subsidized. This was subsidized, subsidized to an extent of about 60%. Uh, uh, instead of selling the pump 
or even the farmers did not have that amount of money. In this case, it was about 120,000 rupees or 40,000 rupees for a system. They didn't have that much amount of money. We said, uh, whatever you are saving on diesel, you give us a rent. And we charge 20% less. We did not do any economics of payback period. We just wanted to test how it was. Uh, by third year, all the 15 farmers who bought it, or who took it on rent, bought us out. They, end of third year, they said, what is your residual value? Take the money and this pump is ours. These pumps are working till today. Sajivan was our uh, last mile service provider. Yes. We work with networks. They are still doing it. They still buy spares from us. Yeah. So they, uh, so they, they, uh, Sajivan was one of our energy service providers who did this service to the end users. And with that uh, inflow, they created enough uh, money to buy more pumps, and they keep on adding one or two more pumps every year. So this was same scheme. Same model, same pumps, two different geographies, it was it behaved in a two different ways. Now we talked about diesel before. Uh, this diesel pump works on around about 8% efficiency. Uh, consumes about 1 to 1.25 liters of diesel per hour. It's a 5 HP diesel. This is a, a workforce of Indian agriculture. Uh, a backbone of the Indian agriculture, uh, about 12 million of them are roughly running around the country. Technology is about 80, 90 years old. No efficiencies have gone into it. Uh, just now, when the last presentation, I heard that 90 rupees an hour is the cost. 100. Converted into kilowatt hours, it is about 30 rupees a kilowatt hour. One liter of, of diesel gives you three kilowatt hours. In this case, the depreciation and the rental uh, is uh, roughly adding to about 30 rupees a kilowatt hour. Today, we can generate solar power at 7 rupees 50 per kilowatt hour. So, the amount of potential which does exist in the market is enormous. <coughs> Each year, depending upon which part of the country you are, you are saving about 80,000 rupees of diesel. Uh, in our experience, and all these diesel pumps, by the way, are centrifugal pumps, which means they are not pumping water more than 20 feet in depth. Uh, so water level is high, and all these situations, you can piggyback any solar pump and uh, uh, to and they roughly irrigate about five to seven acres of land. In our calculation, with flood irrigation, a one half power pump can uh, irrigate about five to seven acres with flood irrigation. And in drip irrigation, uh, or if you go into even more efficient uh, irrigation system, we have gone up to even 15 to 20 acres. One of the farmers in, in Gujarat, in Kutch, has gone up to 18 acres of land with one HP pump. So uh, that's where the efficiency comes in. And one half power pump, uh, the roughly the costs are about one lakh twenty thousand rupees or one lakh twenty twenty five thousand rupees. So the payback period is much much higher. So this only addressing twelve million pumps is a huge gold mine. Uh, in terms of gigawatts, it translates into Enormous amount of if you if you just take one HP or a two HP pump or a two kilowatt into one million, do the maths, you will get the kilo gigawatts gigawatts on that. There is another potential which is even larger than the diesel pumps, where there is pumping potential, but people do not have money to go for irrigation for using diesel when they can't afford diesel rentally, and that's where. Uh, a niche area got created for treadle pumps. Now, there are about 1.5 million treadle pumps running in India, largely in the central Indian districts, uh, Jharkhand, Odisha, Bihar, UP. And these treadle pumps are pumping 7,000 to 20,000 liters of water 
not, not one more federal pump pumps more than 20,000 liters of water. Thumb, rule of thumb, one watt you can pump about 77 liters of water on a 10 meter head. Okay, that's a higher efficiency. I'm just saying uh, average efficiency. 77 liters per watt per day from a 10 meter head. So we, you need about a 100 watt or a 200 watt pump. None of the manufacturers make in India or anywhere in the world. They make, but they are super high cost. This system, anywhere from 10,000 to 20,000 or uh, 25,000, in that bracket, you are covering about close to about 10 million pounds. And that's the level of irrigation which is needed. And in fact, in federal pumps, the uh, the incomes when after installing it costs about 2,000 rupees to install a federal pump. They didn't have this 2,000 rupees. Uh, the income which jumps up uh, is about factor of four or five in terms of income from the agriculture after having a turtle pump. So now having gone through the turtle pump, having touching the higher level of prosperity, people want to diversify to diesel pumps. And that's where the organization ID is uh, who is promoting turtle pumps is wanting to move to solar pumps. There's a huge amount of potential in micro irrigation systems. Now, how to deliver these subsidies or, or these benefits or their viability gap funding and all that? I think technology is a very important tool. Uh, we restored our confidence into in our election system by introducing electronic voting. So we use technology very effectively. Now we are going to the next stage of going to Aadhaar and uh, there is another technology shift which is happening is bank in your pocket, uh, mobile banking. Uh, already the migrant workers have started transferring their, their cash transfers to their back home through mobile phones in Bihar it is very popular. Now how to use this technology to transfer benefit or, or subsidies or benefits directly to end users. So I have just taken a very bureaucratic government approach of announcing a scheme. So if we have a 1 million pump scheme, it gives about 1 gigawatt of power, 100 gigawatt power for it. Instead of upfront subsidy, give a loan and discount it by 50%. Uh, you save money, in fact the 30%, 40% subsidy which the government is giving today, it will cost them at least 15% less than that by doing an EMI subsidy rather than doing an upfront subsidy. So one way is directly transfer a coupon of a certain value and let the user decide what to buy and what size to buy and what fits them and what size to buy. So the only thing which is necessary is some kind of a standardization which is in form of a golden sun quality mark and there are no standards at this point. And very important aspect of government to invest would be in standards where an end user can identify this is good from bad. Uh, and that's where the, the public money should be invested into massively. And if uh, there is a one time to a micro farmer, a one time transfer, there is no need of an EMI subsidy also, they can manage to buy a pump over the counter, they will own it, they will be a strong ownership, they will have a local supplier, local service providers, the entire enterprise chain, chain will open up to service that market. The second system could be through banking and this is what I talked earlier about, uh, EMI subsidy which can move through the same route, again opening up a huge enterprise chain in the rural areas and investment more in quality and supply chain standards rather than just having an infrastructure of distributing subsidies. Okay, uh, this photo picture in this slide some, for some reason has not come. But this was a picture of uh, 
100 kilowatt hydro electric plant which has been working since 1993 in Himalayas and this is run by the local community when it was installed it was installed by the government, pay, government paid fully, that, uh, that village was not connected to grid. <coughs> Eventually the grid came, they abandoned the plant. The people, the IIT Rurki, who was behind the technology, went back and made that plant with a grid interactor. Uh, the plant started selling back to the grid. Government decided that 10% of the revenue of that electricity will go back to the to the village and village will do the operation and maintenance. And uh, uh, whenever there is a power cut for grid evacuation, they can use that power for the village. So that's one of the only villages in that area which never had a power cut. And gets revenue out of whatever power they is sold to the local discount. So what came comes out of that is a some kind of a uh, a model of a company which could be a soil moisture service provider company uh, and and this could uh, be this model of what we discussed earlier about microgrids. Now if you see in, in an electrical feeder there are about uh, there is a 33 kV feeder and then there are 11 kV transformers and agriculture pumps are connected dedicated lines are given 4 to 5 hours of power in off peak hours when the cities are not consuming. Uh, that's where 2 a.m. power comes from. Uh, so uh, each feeder has 200 to 300 or 500 pumps. Now Punjab or, or BE for example is going to replace these pumps with energy efficient pumps free of cost because the amount the discount saves in power saving can pay off all the for all the pumps. Now the, the other possibility is to install a solar plant at the feeder level, a 100 kilowatt, 200 kilowatt, even a 1 megawatt level. And this plant can be into a company and it can be a user company, it's, uh, all the users can be shareholders of that company. And it's not only uh, kind of doing services yeah, this is almost my last slide. Uh, it's not only providing uh, services on water, it is taking care of soil moisture, it's taking of the nutrition, it's taking of all other aspects of the agriculture along with it and their shareholders, the users also become the shareholders. There could be a public shareholder, there could be a private shareholder. And uh, one plant, one large plant is supplying to a cluster of pumps. Now this more kind of a model is more successful in more mature electrical systems or more mature farming uh, systems like Punjab, like Gujarat. Uh, so instead of even kind of spreading these uh, or, or concentrating the solar plants into a park of 300 megawatts, it is better to spread it out uh, and have similar benefits out of it. It can go for reverse bidding, it can go for all kind of viability gap funding and GDIs and and incentives and you, uh, the designers are around the table to figure out what is the best design uh, for financial systems. Uh, but this this would give a kind of a much better reach for every kilowatt hour generated out of solar and a much better social transformation capacities than just putting the plants in a cluster in, in solar parks. That's the end of it. Thank you very much.